Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another session of Office Hours with the Government Contractors Association. If you are joining us live, welcome. If you are here in class with us, welcome. Let's go ahead and uh, do a quick introduction, uh, and we'll start there. Now, Office Hours is your time. As a member of the Government Contractors Association, this is your time to ask any questions that you want, and our goal is to try to find you the answers that you're looking for, and help you to grow your government contracting business. So that's what this time is for. Uh, it's, a, it's your time where you don't have to pay for consulting time, you don't have to pay for anything, just as a benefit of being a member of the association, this is your time here. So let's go ahead and do a quick introduction. Uh, share with us who you are, a little bit about your business, and tell us what your goal is between now and the end of the year. Okay. Well, I'm going to take the liberty to go first. Go ahead. Just because I'm the, the most gracious lady sitting in the room. But actually, my company, we provide um, staffing and recruiting, um, primarily with IT, as well as speaking and training, and, and training in diversity and, and, and diversity and inclusion, as well as women in leadership and leadership. And my goal is right now is to find the right partners to team with so we can build out something that's really solid to go after some really good contracts. So I have meetings actually throughout Atlanta for the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. with people who um, are accounting and attorneys and this and that and the other so that we can um, start bidding up some of these. There's a lot of work out there, mm -hmm. particularly for training and development. The dollar figure is not as big, but um, you get you five or six of them and the people in the right place, you're doing okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so. Now, this Saturday, um, you need a, if you have time, come here for a few minutes. I'm going to introduce you to a training company. Okay. That's, uh, her name is Ellen. I think I mentioned to you, you Ellen. Mm -hmm. She's going to be here this weekend. Wonderful. She's in Florida. She's going to be here this weekend. She'll be here from 10 till about 3 o'clock. Okay. So somewhere between 12 noon till three o'clock, pop in, say okay. hello, I'll introduce you to her. She's got a great training, she's growing her company, she's doing some great things in training, and so that would be a good opportunity to meet with somebody. Wonderful. Is she doing work in Georgia yet? She, she's doing work everywhere, yeah, nationwide. In fact, I think she's also doing some international work in, in Japan and other places as well. And there's no reason, there's no way, there is no reason I can't go where the work is yeah. for experience. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Up next, Mike. I'm Mike Sauls. Our company is Veterans Diversified. We serve disabled veterans on business, our, uh, or our skill set, me and a veteran friend of mine, is really mm -hmm. trying to tap into the project management uh, space for contract from a generalist approach. And so, um, Mostly set aside is our strategy. So, uh, and we've only been around about a year and then eight months now. Mm -hmm. And so, kind of gaining our footing. Uh, part of our strategy was to work on having that uh, financing or mm -hmm. the funds that you can actually touch because you know yeah. a lot of contracts won't necessarily give you the advance. So, you want to have it when you actually move forward. And our plan was just this year to focus on uh, whether we was going to hit the two-year mark and then look for 8A mm -hmm. to get into the set-aside arena and use that yeah. nine years of 8A uh, process to work with. We've had a, uh, last week we got a solicitation, you know, that this month is the month that mm -hmm. contract officers want to spin up the money before yeah. October 1st. And mm -hmm. So we've had one that kind of came to us as service disabled veteran owned kind of Pre-solicitation first, and now the solicitation is out. It's a short window that we have to operate in, mm -hmm. but it's actually what we want to do because we deal with the VA yeah. as disabled veterans, and so now here's one way of saying, uh, and so we're victims of the, the long process the VA takes to do their work. Mm -hmm. So this contract actually is saying we want you to do a time study mm -hmm. uh, uh, project for us <laughs> to actually measure why uh -huh. folks are doing the work. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of that, that blessing mm -hmm. from God. It says, okay, God, clap for this because this is actually what you all are yes. waiting to do. So 
we've been building those pieces, get a project manager, try to figure out all the the pieces to it based on the solicitation. Okay. So we're the question phase for the contract officer, but we know that uh, with the short time, that's because they got this money they're trying to mm -hmm. uh, spend before October. Sure, sure. Yeah, there's always money out there in the government market. Uh, the federal fiscal year is October 1st to <laughs> September 30th. Right. And the, in terms of the state fiscal year is July 1st to, no, uh, to June 30th. So right now, in the, the, towards the last month of the fiscal year for the federal market, so lots of contracts are being awarded th this month for the end of this their fiscal year. Right. So you're, you're exactly right in terms of um, getting in there putting out a lot of projects. So what's your goal between now and the end of the month? Well, how many bids are you trying to submit? Just, we're working on this one. We're learning. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're taking small bites as we jump up and mm -hmm. it because mm -hmm. even going through this, the contract officer gave us, came out last Wednesday as a pre-solicitation. Friday, he said, okay, you have to the 6th of September to give me mm -hmm. all of your Questions in yeah. reference to this uh, solicitation, mm -hmm. and I think he's learning on this because a lot of the things that I'm asking questions on mm -hmm. is given the end result, but he hasn't given the stuff in between. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to put a, a, a price together on what it's going to cost, I need those questions answered. Mm -hmm. But it's great because we're all learning, so it's a yeah. learning process. We go back and get the right questions. I got Two folks that's working the questions that I presented to them this mm -hmm. morning to say, add, edit, put your questions in, that kind of thing. And then we present them and, and we want to walk it so we can professionalize what we do because this mm -hmm. is the first set aside with this kind of setup. Yeah. And the potential is that they want to do all the VAs. Mm -hmm. So if we put the right stuff together and able to do this one, then it can become what we do. Okay. So that's our goal to be to, to learn as we as we crawl. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my suggestion. I think that you do want to take stepping stones, but because this is the the heaviest time in terms of contact opportunity, if you're bidding, try to bid about three this month. Okay. Gives you improves your odd of of winning. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and so it's going to come a, a slow time. October fifteenth, it starts to slow down because there's there's project that. They're going to extend from September 30th to about October 15th, maybe even late October, and and but then it's going to really slow down. Uh, November, December, January starts to pick back up again. There's always going to be money opportunities out there, but it's going to be less opportunity. So, if if you have anything, this is the time to to bid on some projects. All right, next. Alfredo Herrera from Negroshley. We've been in business. Uh, it's going to be seven years this coming October. Uh, we do translation and interpretation for um, basically for um, insurance companies, the workers' compensation industry. Mm -hmm. We're actually serving several uh, school districts locally and um, a few courthouses locally. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, we have interpreters and translators in all languages nationwide. And um, we also do video remote interpretation. Those mm -hmm. are okay. live interpreters, professional certified interpreters that we use. And uh, we have 24 7 for Spanish and American Sign Language. And we also have about 50 languages now. And those we work at, uh, we work in, um, on pre scheduled basis. Mm -hmm. The goal for the end of the year is actually. Um, Getting a contract, you know, I submitted a few okay. proposals, and I um, I got I got awarded one, mm -hmm. but it's not uh, there wasn't a, a single award, you know. Uh, Cherokee County gave us the contract along with other companies, but um, we got some preference because we've been piloting with them for about. Two three years mm -hmm. okay. on video remote and they love it. Mm -hmm. They um, they just I guess figure that it would be better for them to have different uh, uh, contractors. Mm -hmm. But they they given us a, a pretty good amount of work because they given us some preference on that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. actually, 
I would love to have I would love to have the experience of having our own contract. Sure, you know? sure. And that's what I'm working with. Um, really, uh, we have the manpower. We have the experience. Um, it's just my two hands working for the company, so I don't have experience writing proposals. You know, mm -hmm. the only experience that I have is about probably eight, ten proposals that mm -hmm. I already submitted. I don't even yeah. know if I'm doing it right. Or <laughs> doing it. But you're doing it. That's part of it, doing it, right? It's just do it and, and learn. So that's good. All right, awesome. Up next. All right, I'm Phil Marigo, uh, co-owner of um, Nino Dynamics. So we've been in business since 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we are doing cross-cultural consulting business which includes um, translation, interpretation, uh, and includes as well as, uh, we're not yet, but this is something we're gonna do in the future, uh, which is video conferencing. We provide uh, interpretation over the phone or on site as well. And uh, we are in the process of learning how to uh, write proposals and to be able to be with the federal government and local government as well. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Next. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Hi, my name is Happy. I've been in business for 22 years, thought I was retired, and I don't know what I want to do yet. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to unretire. I'm unretired. I know I want to help people. I've been dealing with children and educating children for 22 years. Um, I really don't know what I want to do. I want to be able to help. I like, you know, I want to do something. And, but I don't know. So I'm learning. I'm an infant. I, you know, I'm trying to lift up my head. And I, you know, I'm, I'm starting to lift my head up a little bit to understand what's going on with this Governance. Mm -hmm. you know. I want to crawl soon, but um, I don't know what God has in store for me, but I'm open to it, so I'm going to learn everything I can until I, I know exactly what direction I'm going. Okay. All right. Yep. Part of it is learning and taking steps, so that's good. Well, everybody knows me. I'm Abraham Sion, the founder of the Government Contract Association, so thanks for joining us tonight. Those of you joining us online as well. And then for those of you in class, this is this is your time. So uh, let's start off with the first question. Who has a question? And my goal is to try to find you answers. So who's got a question? Now, Mike, I haven't seen you in a minute, so it's good to see you again. Yeah, I've actually been traveling. Mm -hmm. And I've got a, actually a few businesses that I do. So mm -hmm. one of my other businesses is being an activist advocate for veterans mm -hmm. with disabilities. Yeah. And taking that process to where you go before judges and argue mm -hmm. the validity of their disabilities. That's happened maybe 20, 30 years ago and finding up the evidence. And so that's another thing that I do. Mm -hmm. That's my passion. So yeah. that's what I, this is the only reason why I'm back in the United States. Mm -hmm. Because Germany, where I was at, yes. where everything was free and I could <laughs> just afford that good life that I wasn't even thinking about this. <laughs> so coming back, that passion drew me back. Yeah. And so I do that also. So I've been busy doing that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and I go wherever the veterans are, so, you know, whatever the yeah. state that they're in, so we do it in all 50 states, and we've been invited to go down to um, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. and Ireland, and the Philippines, because there's okay. other communities there. Yeah. So yeah. that's something else besides this right here that I'm trying to get uh, into, because it's, it's an access, you know, service disabled veteran known certification, mm -hmm. there's 3.6 million billion dollars that's mm -hmm. set aside for yeah. that. And so we're trying to plan that space. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's why I've been here in a while, trying to stay fit. And then this fell on my lap, so now we're trying to make this one work. That's right. All right. So questions. So who's got questions? What, what do you think the best thing to do in terms of, um, you know, we team with, with, with a larger company. Mm -hmm. Without a certification, you don't have as mm -hmm. much value to them as you really think. And they really don't need you. But what is another? What is a caveat to go into a major corporation mm -hmm. with team okay. without certifications, or, or is it even possible at this point? Mm -hmm. of the All right. So, 
Why would they want to team with you? Why would they want to team with a small company? But you ready to meet and I thought the Come on in, grab a seat. So what I'm, back. I'm back from out of town. Okay, so the first question is, what's the best way to team with a larger company? And and then I'll answer your subsidiary sure, sure. questions in terms of why would they choose you? Mm -hmm. So teaming, first let me address what is teaming. Teaming is when two or more companies come together and it's a type of partnership. Now, there's many different types of teaming. Teaming as it relates to government contracting is recognized by contracting officers as a way of how they get support for their projects. So that's part of what teaming is. Now, you as a small business, because you have less capacity, you want to team with a larger company because they have more capacity. They've got more proposal writers, they've got relationship, you know, they've got business development people, they've got you know, connections, they've got, you know, they've been tracking projects for a long time. So larger companies have more resources. That's the one thing. And the other thing they have is they already, they have existing contracts that they're looking for small business to work with. So that's why you want to team with them. So the, in terms of teaming, the best way to team with them is be a subcontractor. Be a subcontractor to a large company. And, and with that, they're, they already have a project. They just need good support. They just need small companies to, to support them. Mm -hmm. Now, your second question, which is really your first question, but uh, you know, I consider your second question, is why would they want to choose your business versus other businesses sure. if you don't have any certifications right now, right? So assume one reason why they need a team is because you do have certification. But in your situation, you say, okay, I don't have any certifications yet. Why would they choose me? Certification is a tool. You don't need certifications to win contracts. Many companies win contracts. In fact, 85 to 80 to 85% of all contracts are won without certification. Really? Did you know that? No. So the bulk of government contracts are won without small business certification. They're won without women's certification, veteran certification, 8A certification, all these different certifications. So the bulk of contracts are won without certifications. So, it's, so you don't necessarily want to lead with certification. When you're building a relationship with large companies, you want to build it around you having the capacity and the ability and the strength and the fortitude to support them on their projects. So I'd like to tell this story. If you're trying to work with a company, I, I, I tell this story. You, let's assume that we're all hanging out at a, at a bar, at a, at, you know, at, at a place where people go to meet and to find, some people go to bar to find true love, right? Some people go to churches to find true love. Some, pe yeah. some people go to the park to find true love. Some, some people go to the bar to find true love, right? So let's assume we're at the bar and uh, we're all hanging out there and you're, you're, you're at the bar, I'm at the bar, everybody's at the bar. This is a big bar room here. And Phil comes up and Phil, Phil's, Phil looks at you, Cynthia, and Phil says, hey, Good looking. My name is Phil. I'm handsome. You want to go on a date with me? What are you going to say with that pickup line? <laughs> you lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're like, okay, yeah. who is this jerk? Who is this jerk? Yeah. You know, what a horrible pickup line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and you're freaking me out. Yeah. I, I don't want to go on a date with you. And so that's, that's equivalent of you going to a large company and says, hey, I'm a woman-owned certified business, and do you want to do business with me? That's equivalent to that. You, you go there, and you don't leave that I'm handsome, and I'm good-looking, and you should go on a date with me, right? You don't leave with, hey, I'm 8A certified, or I'm better-owned certified, and I'd like to do some business with you. You go off, you say, hey, you know what, can I learn more about your business? 
And so, so Phil comes into the bar, and Phil says, hey, I haven't noticed you here before. Are, are you new in town? He starts a conversation. What are you going to say back to him? Mm, exactly. I'll converse about. Yeah. Been here for a while, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I'm surprised you haven't seen me because this is my favorite spot. And he's going to say, well, I come here all the time. This is my favorite seat. How come I've never seen you? Mm -hmm. And you start a real conversation, and you naturally get to know each other. And if there's a romantic interest, it happens down the road. It's not going to happen that night. Now, true love may happen that night, but it's not going. that relationship is not going to go to where you're going on dates and you're going steady and you're getting engaged, you're getting married. Contracting relationship happens the same way as a natural human relationship. You meet somebody, whether they're a large company or their potential, assuming you need a service to table better own business. You want to do work with the VA. And you're meeting Mike. You you don't want to come across like, hey, I'm a women owned business. And I know you're you're a veteran owned business. At some point you're gonna need a women owned business. Let's team up together. That's just weird and that just freaks people out. Because that doesn't happen in the real world. So so you don't lead off with that. So now coming back to your question, why would they want to to team with you? They want to team with you because you're a real company. You're good with relationship. You you lead with your what you're good at. You say, hey, you know, I just want to get to know you. This is what I know about your organization, but tell me more. And, and you build a real relationship. And then business will happen as a result of that. They're going to say, oh, wow. And then at some point, they're going to say, wow, do you have any certification? You say, oh, yeah, yeah. And you're my, my woman owned certification is pending. And I've got an ADA TV partner. And so if you, if you need an ADA company, I've got an ADA TV partner. If you need a better owned partner, I'm, I belong to the Government Contractors Association, and I got a better owned business that you know that we can work with on, on any projects you want. And, and so you lead with getting to know people, and not necessarily why. Okay. Uh, you know your why already. Your why is because you're 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 a good business. You know what you're doing. You know how to train people. You've you've been doing it all you know all your professional career, and, and you and you you lead with that, and just. Get to know people naturally. Don't don't force a relationship. Just get to know people naturally, and it will happen. Now the other way is. So how do you build relationships, right? So let, let me go into because we're talking about teaming and relationship. I'm typing this up so because I'm 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 not writing down notes. I'm gonna take take notes here for us. You build. Thank you. All right, so I want to go to this article that I wrote a long time ago and tell you the story about the alley cat. Now, who's heard of the alley cat story? Anybody? Okay, all right. So the rest of you, you haven't heard of the alley cat story, so I'm going to tell you the alley cat story. So you can go read this article, but I'm going to summarize it. And relationship building is like this: sir. whether you're trying to build a relationship with an agency, a contracting officer, a someone like a supervisor at a with an agency, so they can source source you contract, or they can uh, they can say, "I need to work with this company," and they tell the contracting officer to work with you, or you're trying to build a relationship with a teamy partner with a large company. It's the same process. So the alley cat story goes this way here. Once upon a time, there was a little stray kitten. Lives in the alley. And it comes out every now and then, and it looks through the window, and it sees this nice big old house cat inside this, this house. And it's hungry, and it says, man, I sure wish I get a I get good meal every single day, three good meals every single day. 
I get I get cleaned. I get I get I get to purr. I get to I get someone to love up on me. I have someone to take care of me. All I do is just sit, eat, and and, and just do do my job, which is be a be a pet. That's it. And this alley cat has this sees this kitten or this other cat that's in the house, and this it wants to be like that. So one day it comes in to the front door of the, of this of this homeowner. And they notice that every morning at 7 a.m., this homeowner leaves to go to work. So one day it comes in, and this homeowner sees this, this you know, nasty-looking alley cat, dirty and unclean and stinky and so forth. And the, and, the, and, and the man of the house gently uses his feet to brush the little kitten to the side and kept on going. Well, the next day, the alley cat show up again and try to purr on his leg as he was walking out to go to work. And then the next day, he, he shows back up and do the same thing over and over. And then after a few days, the, the owner of this house says, you know what, that poor little kitten, it must be hungry because I see it every day. And it, it looks starving. And it's, I see ribs on, on that little kitten. I, I, mean, I have a little pity on that, you know. Maybe the next morning, I'm going to put out a little milk just in case. It comes back. And the next morning, the owner of the house walks out on his way to work. He takes a little small bowl of, of milk and puts it out in front of the house. And the little alley cat drinks it, drinks it up a little bit. And the next morning, he puts out another small little milk. And the little alley cat drinks it up a little bit. And day after day, he starts to get a little bit of milk. And he starts to, his purr, his skin, start, you know, his coat started to come in, started to glow a little bit, started to shine a little bit. And this owner of the house says, you know what? That's actually the cute little kitten there. I wonder why I haven't noticed that before. So maybe, maybe it's hungry. And it puts out a, a bigger meal instead of just milk. So it brings milk and brings a little bit tray of food. And eventually that little alley kitten is nice and the ribs are gone and it's looking clean and it's looking healthy and it's looking stronger. And one day the owner of the house says, you know what? It's there every day. I might as well let it in the house and clean it up and make sure that it's well taken care of, just like my other kitten. And, and, then the, and he opens the door, he lets you in, and you go in, and this little alley cat goes in and sees the other cat in there. In fact, he sees there's, there's a whole house full of cats in, in this house. It's a cat sanctuary. And he's found his way home. Now, what does that have to do with government contracting, right? Well, what does that have to do with you? Well, you're a small business. You're, you're lost. You're, you're the alley cat. You're, and to a contracting officer, you don't speak the language. You don't, you, you got ribs on you. You don't understand the game. You don't, you don't, you, you have no idea what it's like on the inside. And you, all you see is through the window on what it could be like on the inside. And you want to be in there. Well, inside there's the incumbent. The incumbent is the big old cat that's been in, in the house. It's, got, it's a large company. It started off small. It grew to be a large business in the, in the house or in the agency. The contracting officer is the homeowner. The agency is the big house. And you want to be in there. And so you have to go and purr. You have to go and, and take some risks. And they might, and the, the contract also might shove you out of the way a few times, ignore you, not even see you, not even recognize you. But you have to keep on purring and you have to keep on engaging. And eventually they're going to notice you and they're going to give you a little bit of milk. The little milk is like a small little contract, like, like a $10,000 project, a $5,000 project. And just take that little milk. Don't, don't worry about the $10 million contract. Don't worry about the $50 million contract. Don't worry about the $1 million dollar contract. Just take a little milk, drink it up, and don't make a mess out of it, right? If you make a mess out of it, guess what? No more milk the next day. So, so, so you just got to take care of what that little milk that you, you get. And eventually, they're going to give you, you know, a little bit more besides milk. They're going to give you something more substantial, real food, a bigger contract that's going to be really sustainable to you and your company. And eventually, they can say, wow, this company is really good. They're capable. They're, they're able to really do this there. And they bring you into the house, and you become the incumbent of this agency. 
and they come to you over and over and over when they need something. So, so that's kind of how relation building is. Persistency, 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 showing up, showing up, showing up, follow up, follow up, follow up. And that's, that's, that's relationship building in the government market. Be the alley cat. You're not that good. You're, you're a stray cat to them. They have no idea who you are, but keep showing up and, and they're going to notice you. All right, so next question. So my question is, what okay. would you recommend? small businesses mm -hmm. that don't have time actually to work on the proposal. Mm -hmm. Writing proposal and uh, reading the RFPs and working on government contract basically because they don't have time, they're still working in their business as well. So that's the kind of problem mm -hmm. they have in that. <coughs> okay. RFPs like contracts can go anywhere. Okay. Twenty pages. Yep. Twenty pages. Okay. So, 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 what's your what's your answer? You gotta figure it out. Yeah. No, I mean, really, you do. If unless you unless you got money to pay somebody to do that, but mm -hmm. even still, if you haven't done it, you still want to learn how to do it because eventually you want to pay somebody to do it. But you know, twenty four hours in a day. So that includes Saturday and Sunday. So yeah. my answer is, you know, you gotta figure it out. No, really, figure it out. That's yeah. That's, that's so until a, that's, you're able to. Yeah, that, that that's a good answer. But you got to block your time. You do have to schedule your time, because if you don't, you'll get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But I would say you got to, you know, schedule your time. But you got to figure it out. Yeah. But you want to also make sure that if you're taking it on, you need to know about yeah, it. So you, you got to yeah. be in the details. Yeah, you got to be in the details. You're a figurehead, and you're going to be a figurehead. Somebody else is doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And they know more about and it. And they taking your business. Right, mm -hmm. they can actually, they move in the business. Right. They're not, you're trusting that they're doing what they're supposed right. to be doing, but they're controlling everything. Probably, you, know, probably you just need to revise these goals because maybe going behind the proposals is not what you really want. So here's, here's my answer. If you're too busy to find opportunities, read it, submit proposals, then government contracting yeah, is probably yeah. not right for you. That means you want to be a subcontractor, and being a subcontractor, you don't need to find opportunity, you don't need to re-solicitation, you don't need to build a relationship with agencies, you just need to only focus on one thing, which is build a relationship with large agencies that are winning contracts, and you just be a subcontractor. And that's how you avoid finding opportunities, reading proposals, and writing proposals, or re-solicitation and writing proposals. So, so if you don't like it, or you don't have time for it, then, be a subcontractor because you don't have to necessarily do all those things. There. Now, or if you're, make some time to be a prime. or yeah, and then, or if you want to be a prime, then you got to prioritize. Because there's one thing in life that's given equally to all of us: twenty-four hours. 24 hours. <laughs> so you can't say you don't have time. So when you say you don't have time, it's just a matter of priority. Yeah. Is it if, is is contracting government contracting a priority for you? If it's not. And just be a sub, and that's fine. Be a sub until you grow enough and you're strong enough to where you can be a prime. Because there are people, who, there's a, like there are people who make a really good business so yeah. just, yeah. Being, just yeah. being subs. Yeah. I mean, they really do. They make a killing being just a sub. Yeah. That was my next question. Mm -hmm. Was out uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had a. One example about where to go and get a um, subcontract. Mm -hmm. Can you get us another one? Decide, where do you go to find to be a subcontractor? Okay. Okay. How can we get those? Matchmaking. How can we spend it? Well, government spending is, is to check um, the big companies. Yes, but that's how much how much is being spent that uh, nationwide in the field that you're working. That's what uh, U.S. spending is for, right? Um, I think it's fed this where one of those that uh, we were given, mm -hmm. but I hear there's other other places to go because I already checked that one. 
and all they have on my field, on my, uh, my, uh, how do you say, knights, knights? Mm -hmm. Nicks. Nicks. Yeah, like snakes, but take out the S and just call it nicks. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. All my all my nicks are um, the ones that show on, on, on that one are all cut. Mm -hmm. there, there was nothing recent. Okay. And I actually get in touch with at least a couple of them, and um, they reply to me and say, "Hey, that's an old cut." And I said, hey, "I just notice. I just wanna, I just wanted to get their attention and make my ourselves available." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so we talked about how can you be a subcontractor? Where can you go to find subcontracting projects, or where can you go to to find large companies that are winning contracts so you can engage them and be a subcontractor? So so that's that's the question. We talked about a few weeks ago. We talked about subnet as a as a place to go and find companies that are saying, I'm looking for subcontractors. So that, that was one place. And subnet? Yeah, that's one. But isn't FBO one too? No. FBO is just finding live opportunity. Right, you can find a few projects, but not, not the best place. So I'm going to use our software. I'm going to put in subcontracting and see what shows up, right? Subcontracting with primes. Let's see here. So that just talks about subcontracting requirements. Well, first let's talk about subcontracting quickly. So large companies are required to sub out generally about 35% to small businesses. So that's why you want to you want to be a sub because a lot of the work is required uh, to use small businesses. So. All right, so let me go to the row. <clears throat> subcontracting, subcontracting. Subcontracting, okay. All right. So I have a whole section on subcontracting with primes and large contractors. So there's lots and lots and lots of places, right? Now I can't show you everything tonight because there's just not enough time. So we sh I showed you last time subnet, which is this link here. web.sba.gov forward slash subnet. So this is one place. So this is one place. And now do you remember this, Alfredo? Do you remember this link at all? So I'll take you there quickly. So this is one place, okay? And so when you come here, you, you click on the link, you go to search. That's where I went. That's the one. Yeah. So this is one way. The other way is you, the SBA also has a site. And so I have a video here, and you can actually go and how to find large primes to do subcontracting work for. So this is a, a video I have on YouTube. 
you can actually um, if you just go to YouTube if you just go to YouTube and type in the word how to find large primes to do subcontracting work for we've got over a thousand six hundred views on here so if you go to YouTube because the link is a little odd to, to remember if you want to write down the link is this is this here YouTube tu TV 62 CP capital CP cap lowercase C H L N capital L 7 G that's the link but it's easy to just probably search for it so you search for it how to find large price to do subcontracting work for and it's going to be the first thing you see and you watch the video it goes into a lot of details this video here um, I go through lots and lots of different steps so that's one way that's you know that's a 16 minute video um, but let me show you a few ways. So the SBA has a site, sba.gov. Uh, oh, the site must have been down. So so the SBA has a few places. Uh, they got a few videos, but they also have so contracting <clears throat> so they have this subcontracting assistance program each year the federal government awards billions of dollars um, subcontracting results from war view the complete document so let's see their assistance program. This is so old that it's probably not relevant anymore. It looks old. 2006. So, but but look through it. I mean, they still have different programs. Mm -hmm. What about FBES which one is it? FPDS. FPDS. Yes. Yeah. FPDS is good. I'm. A, I'll look at that in one second. What I want to do is I want to look at the. Uh, the SB actually has a site where. Here we go. I think. Okay, so they have a directory. So every large company is required to have a small business subcontractor plan. Every large company is required by law. When they bid on a contract, they're required to have that. So the F, uh, so the SBA keeps. <coughs> A list in a in a history of it. Now they used to have a website where you can actually go and click on all the companies, but now they they call it. Uh, this is their here. So we're in Georgia. So we're in uh, area three. So let's look at Georgia. So they're actually doing it slightly different now. Used to be. So these are the agency and let's see. So this is the NAICS code or the description. 
and this is the vendor name. This is what you're interested in, the vendor names. So these are all the large companies that have a small business plan filed with the different agencies, and the SBA has its list here. That's in Georgia. So there's 80 large companies in the state of Georgia that have a, uh, a, a small business plan filed. All of these companies are winning because you're in the language service industry. All of these companies will at some point need your support. Because if they're a large company and they're winning and they're doing government work, they're doing international work also. And when they're doing international work, they're going to need your, your language services. Now, if you're in IT or in training, they're going to need people to train their staff because these are large companies. But it tells you what industry they're in. So you can at least have a rough idea. And then it gives you the phone number, right? Vendor phone number. And how much contracts they won. This is probably the most important column here. Let me make this green money. This is, this is how much contracts they won. So 25,000, nah, probably not a, you know. Now this is for contract value in Georgia though. 69 million here, 37 million. So these, these are projects that's based in the state of Georgia. So 40 million. So, so, so supposedly they bring you in as a sub. Of course, the contract is under them. Mm -hmm. What do you calculate as? Can you um, write a narrative on your portion and say you, we did seventy-five thousand dollars or one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in business last year, though we were a sub. So that is if you already have a relationship and there's a new project that you're bidding and you're part of the subcontracting team or the, the team, the teaming partner itself. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, okay, they're going to write your name into the project as they're bidding on the project. So that's one way of how you be, you, you're a subcontractor. I'm talking about contracts that they've already won okay. and they just need support on. Because they, these companies here, they're winning millions and billions and billions of contracts. They're going to need trainers at any given time. They're going to need you know, executive coaching. They're going to need uh, uh, cultural uh, training, cultural sensitivity. They're going to need translation. They're going to need interpretation. They're going to need all these different services in their company at some point. So you go and you build a relationship. Now, who do you want to engage? Now that we have the company name, right? So this is the company itself. And we have the phone number. Who should you call and engage at this company? Purchase department. The purchase department. Okay, so that's one potential. Who else? Better than the purchasing um, department. Small business liaison officer. Yes, the SBLO, the small business liaison officer. Their job is to find small businesses to work with on the big projects that they're winning. Now, there's three titles you want to know. At the federal level, it's the SBLO, the Small Business Liaison Officer. But they also have two other names that sometimes they go by. What's the second name that they go by? Nope. They're, they're working in the company. They're not working for the government. They're working for the large company. They're also called the diversity manager, right? So when you're calling this phone number, let's say Thale Construction, and you're engaging them because you're they want $40 million in government work, and you're trying to engage them, and you're calling and the operator, because they're a large company, so the operator or the receptionist is going to answer the phone, say, hey, how may I do your call? Then you're going to say, oh, can I, can I talk to the diversity manager? Or can I talk to the SBLO? Now, often they don't know the name SBLO. The receptionist may not know that title. 
And so you might want to say the diversity manager. Now the third title that they go by, sometimes they go by the subcontracting manager. So, the, so those are the three titles you engage when you're, in, you're, when you're talking to them. Any of those titles is fine. Now, when you get them on the phone, what are you gonna what, what are you gonna say? Any thoughts? Hi, my name is, name is Hafisa. I'm good looking. You wanna go on a date with me? Present your business and ask the a couple of times a week to learn a little bit more about the business. Yeah. So, so before you call them, you got to do something first, okay? So if, if you just say, oh, I, I'm going to call this number here, right? And you're just going to call them. You say, can I talk to that diversity manager? And they can say, um, I don't know who that is here. Because the reception may not have no idea who the diversity manager is. So you got to do some research first. So, so the way to do it is you take this company, Thale Construction Company, and you go do some research. Now, when you're doing research, there's some things that you want to find out. First is you know you want to find the SBLO. You want to find the diversity and the subcontracting manager. So you want to look for that person. And the Tolly Group, general contract. So Thale Construction is owned by the Tolly Group, which is a larger company. Why do you think I say that? Because I searched Thale Construction and Tolly Group shows Tully up. Group can show that. They show up number one. So chances are that Tolly Group is a group, as a group, uh, it's a large company that has a group of small companies, or not other, you know, not necessarily small, but have a group of companies that they own. So that's my assumption at this point. We'll find out uh, more as we dig deeper, but. So I'm looking through here. I see, you know, it's, yes, they're in Hillsboro. Uh, I see Manta. I see, you know, different things here. And I want to follow my instinct here in terms of um, Tolly Group. And so see if this is really a, a the parent company. Thale Construction, right? So my assumption was correct. So Tolly Group owns Thale Construction, Tolly Construction, Tolly Environmental. So I'm on here and I need to find out who to engage and a few other things. Because if I just pick up the phone and, and, and I just, I took the Excel sheet and I just pick up the phone and say, I want to talk to the diversity manager. I have done no research. When I, even if the diversity manager gets on the phone with me, what do you think that person is going to say to me? Yeah, they're going to say, oh, how can I help you? What do you, what do you, what do you want? And you say, well, I'm a small business. And, you know, I want to do some subcontracting work for you. And I realize that you guys do construction and work really good at construction. This is what we specialize in. You're, you're pitching in. This person is going to say, well, the first thing I want you to do is register on our website to be a vendor for us. That's what they're going to say. Just like you want to do work for the federal government, you're calling a contractor officer, they're going to say, oh, first thing I want you to do is register on SAM. And if you're not registered on SAM, they're saying, well, don't, why are you even calling me? And so large companies usually have a vendor of subcontractors, a vendor of, of small business that they work with. So you want to come to their site to see if there's a way you can register. You see business opportunity here? Click on that. What, what do they say here? Mm -hmm. They are committed to what? Yes, they've ended business in the process. Yes, because the, the federal code requires that they have a small business program. And so they're meeting the requirement by having this statement here say, hey, hey, we're trying to do our job. We want to make sure that the federal government does not ding us for not having a small business program. And so we, we support small businesses. And so we strive to create level playing field where DBEs can compete evenly with co any contractor vendor in the respective scope area, regardless of DB, small business enterprise, woman-owned, 
WB, etc. Whose responsibility is it? The burden of achieving these goals are shared between owner and small business disadvantage. Have questions. Now, who do you get here? Who are you trying to reach? Priscilla Andrew. So now you have this here, you have her email, you have her phone number, and when you're calling, so usually phone call is not the first thing I do. What's the first thing you do? Shoot an email. Yeah, I shoot an email, just say, hey, you know, I want to when introduce myself, my name is Abraham, we're a, we're a great construction company, uh, love to do some subcontracting work for you in the near future. Uh, I've attached my capability statement, and in the next few days, I'm going to give you a call. That's it. Simple. Now, if you tell them, I'm going to call you tomorrow, you better call them tomorrow, right? <laughs> if you say, I'm going to call you in the next few days, don't wait two months later to call them. Call them in the next few days. Generally, give them, you know, tell them uh, the next few days I'm going to give you a call. Because if you say a specific date and time, you may forget. But if you if you know that you're if you're doing your marketing, you now if you say a specific time and, and date, that's even better. That's stronger. It's kind of like you're meeting somebody. Say, well, let's go on a date, and I'll meet you sometime next week. <laughs> that's not good enough, right? Yeah. So if you say, hey, I'm going to call you this Friday at 1 p.m. and whether they're available or not, call them. Don't worry, just call them because you gave them a time. If they're there, if they're interested, they're going to be there. If they're not interested, or if they're busy, they may respond. They might say, "Oh, this is a better time. Call me at this time." But if they don't respond, call them on Friday at one o'clock, the, the time that you told them that you're going to call them. And and Priscilla is going to talk to you, and she's going to say, "Ah, oh, well, you know, have you registered to be a vendor?" Now, if she says that, just say, "You know, I was on your website and I tried to register to be a vendor, but I didn't see it anywhere on all your links." Then she said, oh, wow, this person has done research on us and they're, they're ready to do business with us. And they said, oh, you know what? The, it must have been, I don't know why you couldn't find it. And they, they must have taken it down. So now you actually, you know, you're, you're paying attention to the details. It's going to give you more credibility. But if you're interested in doing work with Tolly or Theo Construction, you have to visit all these sites here, all these links. Because when you're calling them, you're going to call them with a, uh, a real knowledge of them, right? You're not going to go and date a guy who you don't know anything about. You got to do a little research. You know, I've got uh, one of my sister-in-law. She's a little crazy. She says, yeah, you know what? I'm going to do a background check. I'm going to do some blood tests on this person. You know, I'm credit not just going to go and date with, yeah, credit check. I'm not just going to go and date with anybody. <laughs> yeah. Before emailing her, I would recommend you send an email, email in LinkedIn. So if you have a premium account, mm -hmm. then you just type in and send a direct email, like two to three lines. Sure. Before you send an email. Yes. Actually, that's a professional email, and she may have like tons of emails, and you just throw it yes. in the trash. Yes. There's. On average, you have to make seven contacts. So that's the, that's the average in terms of somebody making a buying decision or choosing you. So you meet them at the bar, you see them at the park, you see them at the bar again, you say, can I get your phone number? You call them on the phone, you send them email, you go on Facebook and you connect with them and you chat with them. So you have to do seven touches. So LinkedIn is a good way of how you can touch them now. Some of government agencies don't always use LinkedIn though. And they always they, they generally don't do Facebook professionally. You mean no. government agencies or companies? Companies as well. Let's do business with the because I'm the ton of business through LinkedIn companies. That's because you're using LinkedIn to find them. But if you're finding them this way, not all of them will be on LinkedIn. Yes, no, they find them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's another way of how they can find you, yes. Or if you, if you share the same group on mm -hmm. LinkedIn, you can send direct email. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the premium, uh, yes, things. so you, you find a group that they're in, you join that group, and then you can email them. Yes, yeah. very, very true way of how you do it, yes. 
It says for corporate business development, contact Priscilla. I have a question yes. about subcontracting. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I better hold on to it. No, we're on subcontracting. No, I said it's not about. Oh, okay. So, so we're out of time, so I'm going to wrap it up here. So let's take your question. We'll wrap it up here. Okay. Um, I'm curious, and this is for everybody that's in the room and, and you. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone who is giving you sweat equity and they've invested in your business, um, what do you, what's some suggestions for bonus structures mm -hmm. without giving them compensation salary but in other words you're not giving them and you're not giving them a piece of the company but you want to give them some other form of incentive like a bonus structure but not as an owner you understand what I'm asking mm-hmm I'm curious about ideas that people are so doing. how can you create a bonus structure to a sweat equity partner or well, to someone who's not a sweat equity partner well yeah, I guess they're a sweat equity partner because they're not they don't have any ownership in the company and then they're not slightly well, harmed then. If they're just an investor. investor. Yeah, they're an investor. They're an investor. They're investors for shares? No. No. What are they investing for? They're, they're lending investing you money. For, they're investing for, yeah. So they're, okay, so yeah, they're lending money. They think it's a great idea. They want to be a part of it, but they can't. They're lending, they're lending money for, for two purposes, right? They're yeah. lending money to get a return, uh -huh. or they're, they're, they're giving you money to buy shares. Uh -huh. And then in that situation, then you just say, I'm going to give you a return of 10% okay. and pay you, you know, in 36 months and pay you so much per month, and they're done. Right. It's interest. Yeah, I mean that's. Right. No. So, but you, your question is really different from that. Your, your question is, how do you create a bonus structure so that your incent, so that people are incentivized to perform and help build the company, and not necessarily be a shareholder in the company? Well, that I can create. Okay. I know how to do that. Okay. But I'm talking about because I'm an HR person, so I know how to do that. But I'm talking about on the business side of things. Structure for someone who provides that's not an employee. Mm -hmm. I want to be an employee. Yeah. But they've invested in the company because they think this is a great idea. But they do provide some service, like some small service or something. But they, it's like, I ain't got time. Mm -hmm. This is a great idea. I want to give. Well, some if money. they're putting money, then there's only two things that they they want. They want an interest on their money, or they want shares they in the company. Share. But they don't get no shares in the company, so it's going to be, have to be interest on their Yeah, money. so then you just have to give them high interest so that, you know, and some people high interest is 6% a year. Some people high interest is 30% a year. Right, because most angel investors want 30%. Well, most angel investors they want like hundred percent right. return. Most angel investors yeah, they're, they they're, they're investors for equity. Right. They, they want they're equity. Not, they don't yeah, want they're not lending they money. They want equity. Of course. Yeah. Because that's why. They should. They should. They should. They should. Yeah. Without you ain't doing it. I mean, without their money. Yeah. So let me give you to incentivize a. And investor. Okay. So if you don't want to take on an investor and you need a little bit of money to get going, raise money is prosper.com. Yeah, well, I'm not, I don't need that. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to compensate without compensating. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to try to figure out how I'm going to compensate without. Yes. Yeah. If people are giving you money, there's only a few other few ways. Now they may they may want a social benefit, which you may not want to give. But outside of that, social benefit. Yeah, yeah, You know, they they might want to. Have I wasn't money. even going there. <laughs> Could be a girl, so don't. Be hey, Hey, brother, if I give you some money, I'm going to tell you what the interest is. I'm not, I love your Correct. idea, but I need to have this. Correct. So they, you want to know that they want me for it. I know that about 